So let's go. We've got a lot to get through, Victoria. Mm -hmm. What are we talking about today? We are talking about writing and more precisely at C1 and C2 level. Excellent. So we are going to start by looking at skills at C1 and C2 and the tasks that can be found in C1 advanced and C2 proficiency, but very quickly. We are just going to pay a bit more attention um, to part one. Uh, I'm going to hopefully give you some ideas to help develop your students' skills and we'll be unpacking or looking at in more detail the, the criteria that we use at high levels, um, which if you've been to any of our other sessions, we're very big fans of criteria. It is there to help assess, but it's also there to help you as teachers and to help your students. So we think that the, the greater the awareness our students have of the criteria that we're using to mark them, um, the better they can be. It can help them identify their strengths and weaknesses more easily. Um, and it helps you as teachers um, give a, a fairer, more structured um, assessment of, of, of the work that they do. Um, if you came to our session on Wednesday, um, we're keen to bear these three areas in mind, especially at C2, C1, C2, especially. Um, integrating skills at this level, we think is, is very useful and important. Uh, because it is how we use language um, naturally. Um, and I think at these, le these levels it becomes even more important. Victoria, why? Yeah, because it allows for richer discussions. Also, as you said, learning is more natural and authentic. We can also make use of material in a more effective way. And also students have a more active role in their learning. We are Students should be autonomous by now, uh, and even more at this level, uh, they, become, they will become more autonomous, and we will be uh, facilitators who will be guiding their learning. Exactly. Um, less, you know, here's a grammatical structure on the board, write it down and practice it. It's more accompanying them on their journey to becoming proficient users of English. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, we start off, we did this last time, we are huge fans of the CEFR. What's the CEFR, Victoria? It's a uh, Common European Framework of Reference, it's an international standard. Uh, it was produced um, by the Council of Europe and other language um, examining uh, bodies, uh, such as Cambridge in English, the Alliance Française, the Get Institute, sorry for my pronunciation, and um, yeah, it is an international standard that helps um, guide what students can do, language students can do at different levels. Um, uh, David continue the link in the chat. Oh, he's done it. Amazing. I think I made a slight mistake um, on Wednesday and said it was about 60 pages long. I think it's more like 260 pages long. Um, and what is interesting, the levels that we talk about, A2, well, A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, C2, um, as Victoria says, it gives a very clear um, explanation and description of what it means, what, what these levels mean. And within the document itself, it is made up of can do statements okay mm -hmm. so what what students are expected to be able to do at these levels so we have a quick look at writing um, on reports and essays at c1 write clear well-structured expositions of complex subjects mm -hmm. underlining the relevant salient issues and can expand and support their points of view at some length with subsidiary points reasons and relevant examples C2, Victoria? Yeah, at C2, we understand that students can write smoothly flowing complex reports, articles, or essays. So a, a wide range of texts with present, uh, which present a case. Also give critical appreciation of proposals or literary works. And they can also provide an, an appropriate and effective logical structure, which helps uh, the reader to find significant points. Crikey. Um, other can-do statements at work, um, C1 can, given enough time, so there is a caveat there still mm -hmm. at C1, write a report that communicates the desired message. So communicatively at C1, they can achieve their communicative aims quite easily. Okay. C2, full and accurate notes, continue to participate in a meeting or seminar. Study, Victoria? 
Yep, and see when they can write a piece of work uh, whose message can be followed throughout. And at C2, they can make accurate and complete notes during the course of a lecture, seminar, or tutorial. Right, just a little bit of guidance, what we're sort of aiming for and what we're talking about here. So I'm um, going to have a quick look at the writing um, papers, the writing papers themselves. Um, what task types feature in each paper in C1 Advanced and C2 Proficiency? Victoria, can you explain the lovely color coding on this, uh, on this slide? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, purple is for C2 proficiency, the tasks that can only found uh, in C2 proficiency, and the green is for the tasks that can only be found in C1 advanced. The ones that are white um, can be found in both C1 and C2. Okay, so part one is an essay in both papers, and then there's a variety of options in the part two. Mm -hmm. As we said at the beginning, we're not going to be looking at these different task types in detail, um, sort of the, the, the conventions and the format um, associated with each one. There is plenty of information on that in the um, teacher's handbooks. Uh, the C1 Advanced Teacher's Handbook and C2 Proficiency Teacher's Handbooks, please download them. They are uh, one of the most useful documents um, on each exam that exists. There are examples of, of, the, of the tasks, but are much more interestingly, the testing focus of each part of the exam. And when it comes to writing, um, sample answers, which we think are incredibly useful. So as opposed to model answers, these are sample answers taken from real candidates who have taken our exams with um, with uh, the examiner's comments, the marks that they were, that, that, that they achieved, and the examiner's comments. It's a really nice way to look at how the different criteria are applied by examiners, how to do well on certain criteria. Um, and we think following a model like that is a really nice way for you to mark your students writing. We'll have a look at some of these in more detail at the end, okay? So, writing overall. Victoria, what yeah, are you thinking about? <laughs> we are going to look at the writing process, which can be divided into four main parts, uh, very general ones. Uh, the first one, planning, then conventions, critical thinking, and criteria. This is just the order we have, uh, we are presenting them, but obviously all of them are interrelated and uh, have a very close relation. Uh, yes, and by no means are these the only aspects of the writing process. That's what we're going to try and look at and think about today. Okay, so planning, ensuring that students really consider the task and its requirements um, carefully. Um, and they're really planning their ideas, the structure and the language that they're going to use. Conventions, Victoria? Yeah, uh, when planning, they will also need to be considering conventions. They need to be familiar with different text types, so they should be exposed to different text types by now. And also the conventions so that they can adapt their language and use the text features that suit uh, each text type. Lovely. Um, critical thinking really comes into play, I think, a lot more at, at C levels. So, um, helping students identify, contrast, evaluate various opinions, evaluation, particularly moving up into C2, um, that are presented to them in, in the input texts, and also after they have written, thinking critically about what they have written, um, mm -hmm. and what will help them do that, Victoria, and you, the teachers. Yeah, um, the criteria. So the, uh, the marking the assessment criteria uh, are very, very useful for teachers, of course, but also for students that so they can evaluate um, their texts. They, they are aware of their strengths, weaknesses, um, and they know how to improve and also what is expected of them. And uh, by no means do these four areas exist in isolation. There's obviously overlap between all of them and all of them inform one another. I mean, especially planning. Planning, you have to take everything into account. Your target reader, the purpose of the writing, the conventions that you need to, that you need to follow. Is it an article? Is it an essay? Is it a report? 
um, critical thinking we've spoken about, and also bearing the criteria in mind at the planning stage, I think is also very um, a very useful way to ensure that you will be fulfilling all of the criteria successfully. Okay. Um, so we're going to have a look firstly at the part one. It's the only one we're going to look at in detail. Unfortunately, Emma, we don't have time to discuss set text task for CPE today. Um, I'm a huge fan of using set text, both for um, candidates reading and use of English skills and for their writing skills. Um, but there is there is information on the website about those. I think this year the set texts are All About a Boy by Nick Hornby. And can you remember what the other one was, Victoria? Mm. I'll find out. I'll find out. Yeah, apologies, Emma. I'd love to, but there's not a huge take up on set texts internationally. Oh, well, globally speaking, there's not a huge, huge number of candidates that we have for proficiency, but set texts even fewer. But if your students are, 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 are are keen, I'm a huge fan of using literature in the classroom. So what was I saying? Essays. We're going to have a look mm -hmm. at, at at the part one. Okay, so this is a, this is the the compulsory task in both in both um both parts. So C1, what are our students um thank you, Daria. Uh, what are our students um presented with in advanced? Yeah, um, this is an example of, of what they are going to find in a C1 Advanced Writing Paper, Part 1. So as you can see, uh, there is quite a lot of information that the students need to read before starting to, to write. But um, everything is quite uh, well structured. So um, first, uh, they are giving an initial rubric detailing what the topic is and they can find information about um, that, that gives them context, provides them context for the information that is going to be provided later on. And then, sorry, George, yes? No, 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 no continue. <laughs> sorry, three, three elements, they are uh, provided with three elements uh, from the discussion and that the students need to write about, they only need to choose two of them. And they are also given some opinions that will help them. And finally, uh, just the clear instructions about discussing and using their notes, expressing opinion, and giving reasons to support them. Lovely, and a really nice way to help help students build up to um, to to this task at, at C1 is breaking it down. We had a nice you had a nice exercise for scaffolding this in class, didn't you, Victoria? Breaking it up yes. into these four areas. Yes, um, the, the idea was maybe to start with, I think we used photographs at the beginning so to get them uh, predicting the type of language that they are going to use, some of the, uh, so the first thing was giving box one with the photographs that they could predict some of the, the content there and come up with their own opinions. Then they were given um, the rest of the boxes and they were um, given also a text with gaps that they had to um, fill in with the right cohesive devices. And then once that was uh, done, they were ready to write their own, their own essay. So giving them as much support as possible. And then once they are ready, remove the support so that they can do the task in a more autonomous way. Excellent. And so from a planning and a critical thinking uh, point of view, I think that the, the, the exercise that Victoria just spoke about is a really nice way to to get them used to identifying the different elements that they need to bear in mm -hmm. mind when planning. And they need to think about these, um, you know, critically um, as well. They only need to choose two of the areas in their notes, um, express their own opinions and give reasons to support them. So in terms of thinking critically about them, once they have identified, they have to make sure that they can um, give their own, give their own reasons to support things um, or, or the, two, the two areas that they've spoken about. Um, and yes, expressing your own opinions. Um, in, in, in box four, expressing your own opinions. Um, you may, if you wish, make use of the opinions expressed. But you should use your own words as far as possible. And um, we'll talk about this in a bit more detail later when we look at organization and 
community mm -hmm. of achievement but and a big step up now really um i think in terms of the language that is used especially um you can you can write a, a nice tidy essay at b2 with an introduction looking at one point in a paragraph looking at another point in a paragraph coming up with a with a conclusion and they are encouraged to be to 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 express their own opinions mm -hmm. uh, we see a lot of candidates at that level using um using quite personalized language mm -hmm. i believe etc c1 we really want them to start um sort of universalizing uh, generalizing opinion. So what kind of language will we be using for that, Victoria? Yeah, more impersonal structures, also uh, passive voice will become also more, more relevant here, more widely used. Exactly. It is commonly believed that, or mm -hmm. many people. So it's that jump up to a more academic um, use of language, uh, which will then influence everything else, structure, community of achievement but as i said we'll look at this in in more detail so this is the input for for the c1 task it's quite a lot of input but it's tidily structured and broken down so with practice and with um with with with, with a nice structured support to how to deal with it and how to plan um this shouldn't shouldn't pose too many problems uh, for c1 jumping up to c2 which is quite a big jump this is the input text. So we have the rubric there, write an essay summarizing and evaluating the key points. Um, and 200 word, around 100 word mm -hmm. input texts. So um, what we spoke about before about integrating skills, I mean, as, as far as um, as far as possible, our, our skill specific papers, you know, are, are designed to test the skill that we're talking about. But especially at these high levels, you know, it's um, very difficult to test test any skill in isolation, and I don't know how useful it is in the classroom, even less so. So we are looking at um, at some sub skills of reading here. They need to be able to assimilate and um, incorporate all of this information quite quickly mm -hmm. um, before they start planning. Um, and it is a much more realistic, should we say, like a much more academic approach mm -hmm. to to writing an essay. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, they need to summarize and evaluate the key points from both texts. Use your own words as far as possible. And we would say, encourage your students not to lift anything from the two texts. In terms of chunks of languages, clauses, please encourage them to paraphrase, rewrite, as we were speaking about before, um, generalize, universalize what, what is being spoken about. And including your own ideas, yes, but presenting them not as I believe this. Mm -hmm. um, this, I think, is, 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 as we said, one of the big, big differences at sea level, especially the higher, higher end of sea level. Um, so yeah critically speaking victoria yeah um yeah they need to evaluate and uh, and summarize the ideas in the in the two texts incorporate their own and make it uh, a whole in their in their own text so they need to provide their text with a common thread and a line of argument that that incorporates this uh, the input from the from the texts and their own opinion and in order to do that um obviously critical thinking is is vital and also the ability to rephrase is also uh, very important here uh very much so so yeah i mean a, a structured approach to this and um, perhaps in the classroom giving them time to practice find the commonalities between two, the two texts the differences between the two texts mm -hmm. they will always be on 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 a very on a similar subject but from different angles. So it's um, being able to, to, to quickly read and identify identify the, 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 the common thread running through the two of them um, and assimilate what they don't have in common mm -hmm. into your, your, your summary and evaluation um, of them. And you know, it's absolutely fine to disagree um, with, with, with whatever common thread they find. Um, but this is a challenging task. We looked um, on Wednesday, a really nice way to practice this text at a time, but still it's a structured approach to it, is um, on read and improve. I think David might be able to um, put the link to that um, in the chat box. Read and improve, if you weren't here on Wednesday, 
is a great tool. It's in development, but you can um, go along, click in the, um, choose the level that you want, and it gives you a selection of text, real life authentic texts um, harvested from the internet. Um, it gives you more or less the level that, that is necessary. And the most useful bit for this task is um, there's a box at the end of each text and um, students are asked to write a short summary of each text. They can then click send, it's marked automatically. It's marked based on language, language, um, you know, grammar, vocabulary, complexity of language, and on relevance. So relevance to the text that you are summarizing. Okay, so um, I would encourage your students to play with that. C1 as well, it's, it's a really nice automated quick easy way to um to to practice this um this sort of assimilation and re re mm, well, what am i trying to say victoria um uh, well re reproduction of ideas um in a different way david can, there's there's the link thank you david okay so there's a quick look at the essay, and it is a big, it's a big jump from from C1 up to C2. Um, C2, I mean, this this is the kind of thing we would expect, you know, university students to be to be um, doing in their in their everyday educational lives. I think, um, and and the skills are quite different. They're, they do have the input, but there's there's no support per se, no explicit support uh, like in C1. So they do need a lot of practice with this. Okay. Um, so we've had a think about planning, uh, critical thinking. Again, as I said, the conventions, they all need to be borne in mind, but we don't have the time to go through every task type. All of that information is, is, um, is, is, is available very clearly, yeah. very clearly presented in the handbooks. Um, and make sure that your students are aware of how, of, of the conventions of each task type. Maybe not all of them. But at least uh, at least three or four, because you know if they're like, I'm going to write an article, and it, something comes up that they're not happy to be, while well, they're not comfortable, um, they're not comfortable writing about. It, it's nice to have at least three or four different task types sort of in their pocket, ready to go in the exam. Okay, mm -hmm. and one of the best ways, uh, uh, apart from um, making them aware of, of the, the characteristics of each other is, as we said, using authentic texts. One of the big advantages of C1 and C2 students is you can, you can give them pretty much anything um, in terms of authentic material. So show them examples of reports, examples of articles. Um, there's, there's, there's a lot less um, ready to go teaching material at these higher, higher levels, we're aware, but at the same time, Using authentic materials, you know, with a, with a little twist, um, is 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 much easier at, is at these levels. I think. Okay, we'll be talking about writing improve at the end, so don't worry. <laughs> so we're talking about those. What is the next big one, Victoria? Criteria, criteria. our favourite. Um, and just a quick look at how criteria spreads across the levels. Lower level writing. Um, we would say sort of A1 up to B1. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's a much greater focus on control of language, accuracy, and there's very limited freedom in terms mm -hmm. of the task types that they're offered. They're given three content points, write a letter, make sure it covers these. So yeah, it's much more a sort of... Sorry, Victoria. No, yeah, I was just going to say that the limited freedom has to do with also the amount of support because it is the tasks are, are very much guided so that exactly they're they very directed well. exactly mm -hmm. very directed towards what is expected of them and given plenty of support to get there. At higher levels, Victoria. Yeah, at uh, high levels, the, and the freedom is increased because we are removing the, the supports. They, they, they can develop their ideas more freely. And that's also because of what we said no, about the support. And the focus uh, here is mainly on organization, register, and also the communication of, of ideas. Uh, simple and in the lower levels, B2, and at B2, we, we start seeing that they need to start um, communicating some more complex ideas. And this is going to be a challenge. 
for some maybe younger students? Exactly. I mean, our, our criteria are all weighted equally. So control of language, etc. Yes, obviously, it's very important at these high levels and, you know, a much greater um, control of more complex language, more flexibility. But uh, there is a more developed focus, let's say, on organization um, register, community of achievement, which we're going to be looking at um, from now on. But just to have a think about how we structure all of our criteria um the cambridge english model of writing um well we'll have a look at how this is built up and then how the criteria reflect this so at the heart of everything is the message is the text that is written or that the candidate is expected to write so that is that that is the end product um how what else feeds into this victoria what do candidates need um, to come up with this message first yeah once this is clear they, they need to have uh, um, they need to think about the cognitive aspect that is the ideas that they they come up with uh, for that specific task so we are talking here about the content lovely um, and obviously once they've had their ideas they need to put them into language <laughs> so we're looking at the linguistic aspects as well you know vocab grammar register um and playing into that as well your favorite victoria mm -hmm. yes in order to choose the, the right words and um, our students need to take into account who they are writing to why they are doing it and also the, the type of text that they they need so the sociolinguistic angles, exactly what we're talking about, the type of type of writing that they're doing, who their target reader is, the purpose of their message. And again, none of these exist in isolation. There's interplay between all of these. Okay, so bearing these four areas in mind, um, a drum roll, Victoria, I think. Is it time for the drum roll? <laughs> yes. <laughs> here, <laughs> here are the criteria yeah. for C2. Um, for those of us who have been with us before, um, apologies, but for those who haven't, um, all of our criteria for writing and for speaking overlap, okay? So um, a band three at C2 is C2, okay? A band one at C2 is C1. So the C1 criteria is, um, moves down a, a, a couple of, well, moves down a band, if you see what mm -hmm. I mean. So a band one at C2 is a band three at C1. Mm -hmm. A band three at C2 is a band five at C1. Uh, because in our papers, we have upward and downward certification. So if somebody, um, if a candidate does very well on a C1 paper, they can, um, and they have demonstrated um, abilities at C2, um, we we recognise that. Also, if they don't quite get up to B one, uh, C one, they will get um, recognition that they that they have a B two level of English. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's how our criteria work in terms of the bands, um, and it is always divided into these four areas. So content, which is the same for all levels, this is very much focused on the the the, the cognitive, I suppose, and 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 the. The, the, the content that reflecting the input that they have been given. Um, so all content relevant to the task, target reader fully informed is a five, target reader on the whole informed a three, and one minimally informed. Um, we um, please, please make sure that your students answer the question. It's such a shame, especially at the lower levels, it's such mm -hmm. a shame when they've written a beautiful piece of writing but they haven't included one of the content points um, and they cannot get full marks. It's as easy, regardless of all the other, other criteria, it's easy to get full marks on content. And, um, and then you've got 25% you've got of your mark done. Okay, these are equally weighted. Um, then we have language at the other end of the scale, Victoria. Fairly obvious mm -hmm. for English teachers, I think. <laughs> yes, we are looking at fluency, precision, sophistication of, of the language and style, and also uh, control and accuracy, also uh, using it in a natural way. So um, 
yeah, very, very specific and very demanding at this level, of course. Yeah, I mean, C2, so full control, flexibility, sophistication, and errors, if present, related to less common words or structures or as slips. C2 plus, you know, you're writing like a, a skilled native writer. Okay, but what we're going to focus on, mm -hmm. we're content and yes, Eleni, I would not necessarily, I'll see what David has to say about that, but I would say that content should be a given. If they, if they do what is asked of them, they should do well on the content. And it's such a shame when they mm -hmm. haven't read the question and fall down on content. Mm -hmm. The content and language we're not going to focus on. We haven't got time to go into the depths of C2 uh, <laughs> vocab and grammar. Yeah. Um, so we're going to be focusing, as we said before, um, on the two that I think become more developed and more complex um, at, at C1 and above. So communicative achievement mm -hmm. and organization. Okay, so to have a, a little look at cumulative achievement, perhaps a little lower, just to try and um, try and exemplify the various constituent parts of it. At B2 especially, it begins to split into two main areas. Lower levels, I think a lot of teachers, cumulative achievement, you know, the register, the format. Does it look like an email? Does it read like an email? Does it look like a story? Does it read like a story? Once we move up to B2, it begins to split. So yes, using the conventions of the task to hold the target reader's attention. Um, so yeah, that's what we're talking about, register, format, style. But communicate straightforward ideas at B2, okay? Moving up to C1, straightforward and complex ideas, okay? And then C2, communicate complex ideas in an effective way, holding the target reader's attention and fulfilling all of the purposes. So it's this idea of conventions and holding attention and communicating ideas. And as we said, getting up to C1, these be, we begin to differentiate between straightforward and complex ideas. To give you a bit of an example of what we mean by this, this is taken from um, B2 script. Okay, so this was, um, these are two separate essay questions. Teenagers are too young to teach other people about anything. And every country in the world has problems with pollution and damage to the environment. Do you think these problems can be solved? What is, what do we want to focus on about these, Victoria? What is instantly, as an English teacher, what is noticeable? Yeah, we, we can look at language and we can also look at communicative achievement. So in terms of language, which maybe is what you were referring to, that this mm -hmm. is the thing that we are going to notice first. Um, we can look, we can see that um, A um, has a better use of, of language, whereas in the case of B, it is a bit more, how do you say, wobbly? <laughs> oh, I think I said wobbly earlier, didn't I? Yeah, it's a really, I really like the ocean residence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, A, this is strong, strong B2, I would say. We've got a really nice couple of sentences, uh, multi-clause sentences, um, very nicely constructed. There's one little slip somewhere, I can't remember where it is. But this is, this is very nice, a very nice, tidy couple of sentences. The second one, yeah. Uh, not, not, not entirely accurate. I mean, they're they're they're, they're trying, but yeah. it's not a hundred percent. However, in A, yeah, the yeah. idea that mm -hmm. is being expressed here is basically agreeing with the title, and it's nothing very original or complex. So yes, adults teach children important things. If they didn't children wouldn't know what they do and it would be harder. It's not a very developed, complex idea, okay? Whereas the second point, obviously that cleaning manufacturing water helps to avoid extinction of ocean residents um, is, is considerably more complex and thought through. So mm -hmm. obviously on, on the language criteria, A would do, would do very well, B wouldn't. But I think in communicative achievement, which would be affected because it's not very clear, etc. But in terms of the complexity of the idea, B is a far more complex idea. Mm -hmm. A is using very complex language, but the idea is very straightforward. So we really want to focus on, on this difference. And that's why it's important, I think, to, to look at each criteria as far as possible on its own and be aware that they are marked evenly on each criteria. Um, and one, one big thing we see um, in our context in Spain and Portugal, more and more 
sort of, uh, you know, teenagers, 14, 15, 16 year olds taking, taking C1. And yes, their language is wonderful, very complex. Um, they have a, a great command of their language, but it's the maturity of their ideas, which somewhere they, sometimes they fall down a little. <clears throat> And this, you know, we, we, we can't do anything about this. This is how the CFR is, uh, is, is, uh, is how the CFR um, looks at different aspects of, of, of mm -hmm. um, language ability. So bearing this in mind, I think, is increasingly important from C upwards, okay? Um, looking at the C2 criteria, again, we've seen the band one and the band three. Mm -hmm. Looking at C2 plus, complete command of the conventions and communicates our complex ideas in an effective and convincing way okay right where are we moving to now victoria going into them in more detail so we're going to look at communicative achievement and we'll, we'll be moving from b2 up to c2 as so we can see that see that progress see that journey um so starting with B2, Victoria, if we're thinking about ideas. Yes, in terms of, of ideas, simple and complex, we can see that um, in general, the, the candidates uh, tend to describe rather than comment or, or evaluate. So uh, they are just merely, um, they are just uh, describing the, the ideas, but not adding some more value to it, uh, evaluating them and commenting on, on them and as a result this is going to have an, an impact on the type of language also that they use exactly but this is b2 and we saw the criteria mm -hmm. expressing straightforward fine. ideas so that is mm -hmm. fine a b2 that is fine yes. quite descriptive um quite here is an idea here is another idea okay mm -hmm. moving up to c1 um we're using some examiners comments here to exemplify how the how the examiners use the criteria um, one nice thing, and I think, especially in essays, we'll look at the organization a bit more later, but uh, B2, you can quite tidily do, you know, an introduction, paragraph one on one topic, paragraph two on, 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 the, on the other topic, or paragraph one for the argument, paragraph two against the argument, conclusion. Four paragraphs, maybe five paragraphs, done, mm -hmm. okay? C1, you could follow that that structure, but we're looking for a much more sophisticated thread throughout. And um, this example that we used, um, um, the yeah. structure of the essay in, in this example, um, mm -hmm. they decided to discuss both sides of the argument in tandem, in parallel throughout the paragraphs, which is, closer to a so to a sort of native um or a, or a more academic um essay and mm -hmm. it's it gives them the opportunity to develop ideas um more in a more complex manner more easily i mm -hmm. think increased scope for them to communicate these ideas because they're linking the advantages and the disadvantages um in parallel okay and then mm -hmm. at c2 victoria Yes, we, we see that at C2 ideas are, of course, more fully developed within each paragraph and this allows them uh, to express uh, more complex ideas as well. Excellent. Um, thinking about perspective, again, we spoke about this earlier. Um, at B2, it's absolutely fine to have quite a subjective personal opinions and talk about those back them up at b2 we are we are expecting them to sort of justify what they're saying um, mm -hmm. but that's okay c to c1 a really nice um, approach is to um stating a position early on um and then referring backwards and forwards to that mm -hmm. introduce arguments for and against their position which will sort of naturally help them develop more complex ideas and a really mm -hmm. nice approach um, is when we're helping them with their planning, is to plan plan the body, plan what they're going to say, come up with a conclusion, decide what their conclusion is, and then write the introduction. Mm -hmm. Only really decide on the introduction once they are sure of their conclusion, because it's stating um, 
a position or an idea in the introduction then developing and developing and developing it before reaching the conclusion i would recommend not introducing anything new in a conclusion mm -hmm. this um already creates a, a a structure which will naturally sort of refer forwards and backwards to itself throughout and it creates this much more sophisticated thread throughout the piece of writing mm -hmm. see you too victoria <laughs> yeah, at scene two, we are going to see what has already started, hopefully, at scene one. So we, uh, with candidates taking a more objective approach to the topic, rather than relying on subjective and personal opinion in their essays. So the way they present the information, their opinions, it's more objective. And the views expressed can be evaluated based on evidence as a result presenting the text rather than on the personal opinion of the, of the writer. So we are just trying to, to present our ideas as they are part of like uh, objective um, information in the text. And it's absolutely fine to, to include their personal opinions, but it's how mm -hmm. that is presented. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. It's very easy to, to generalize or universalize an opinion mm -hmm. and using more complex language and things like passive structures. Etc. Um, flexibility, which again from C upwards, we are looking for a natural, flexible um, use of language and approach to a task, use of the conventions of a task, use of the um, the communicative conventions of an article, of an essay, of a report. And so B2, fairly straightforward. As I said before, if we're talking about an essay, introduction one paragraph, two paragraph, maybe three paragraph mm -hmm. conclusion. Um, C1, I think we're beginning to see more variety in mm -hmm. the way they're constructed, as I mentioned earlier. Yeah, so they have more resources as well to do that. Mm -hmm. Comparing and contrasting the two aspects throughout the essay and building up towards a conclusion. Um, and then at C2. Yeah, candidates again have more resources and they can take different approaches to the task and this obviously widens the scope of the debate and presents gives them the opportunity to present other uh, points of view and their discussion of the topic and their discussion sorry <laughs> oh, that's great <clears throat> so now we're just going to look at a few examiners comments at each level okay so these are examiners comments on um on on a on a real a, a real script, okay. Mm -hmm. As I said, you can see examples of all of these in the teacher's handbook. Some of these are taken directly from the teacher's handbook. But at C two, complete command of the conventions of the essay, communicates ideas in a complex ideas in an effective and convincing way, holding the target reader's attention with ease, fulfilling all communicative purposes. Effective use of opening question to engage the reader's attention. And as I said, I imagine starting with a question like that and referring back to it and back to it as you build your argument towards a conclusion is a very nice way to, to structure an essay. Mm -hmm. um, so organization, uh, up to about, you know, I think, uh, a lot of the time it's like use paragraphs use paragraphs use linking words which yes mm -hmm. sort of b levels yes b2 would begin to expect a bit more sort of in uh, evidence of internal organization within paragraphs mm -hmm. and then up to sort of c1 i'd say reference and organization and and flow across paragraphs through throughout a whole text mm -hmm. okay so the 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 criteria uh, focuses on on coherence, organization coherence, the use of cohesive devices and organizational patterns. Mm -hmm. okay. um, C2, a variety, organizational patterns with flexibility. And then at C2, organized impressively. <laughs> Victoria is very good at organizing everything. Um, and coherently, using a wide range of devices and organizational patterns with complete flexibility. So we're by cohesive devices, we're not talking exclusively here about linking words. I think B2, we would expect students to start using linking words effectively mm -hmm. and accurately. We don't, we do get a lot of essays at B2. Every paragraph or every sentence starts with a, you know, starts with a nevertheless or a however. And when it's not used effectively, that has a horrible knock on effect on language, um, communicative achievement, et cetera, because. Um, 
you know, it, it, it sometimes affects the flow and the, the understanding of, of the piece of writing. Mm -hmm. So looking at organization, Victoria, B2. Yeah. Uh, B2, um, still fairly simple, as you said, uh, first main point, second main point, uh, well, uh, in a B2 task, they need to add the third um, idea, so their own idea, and then a conclusion. So again, we are looking at, uh, still at a, a quite a simple and straightforward way of structuring texts. And again, it is it is okay. It is what is expected of them at, at B2. And then at C1, we're going to see that candidates may still follow input material and they still structure their texts following the, the structure in the input material but points are more developed and they are connected across the whole text. So we are going to be looking at this connection that you mentioned before across different paragraphs that make the text look as a, as a whole. And at C2, a more balanced view in terms of how much text they devote to each aspect mm -hmm. um, throughout, throughout the piece. Um, cohesion. Again, a B2, fairly simple. And yes, linking words like however, although, even though, in conclusion, on the one hand, on the other hand, um, it's very nice to see those used, as I said, effectively and accurately um, in a B2 essay. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of paragraphing, we've got two extremes here. Um, I think for, I, I'm not sure, but I have a lot of experience of, of um of romance language uh, speakers um and in spanish for example uh are very big fans of using lots of commas and no <laughs> full stops <laughs> is that true victoria <laughs> sometimes yes. um so you know an essay could be a, a one sentence paragraph um so again a lack of effective punctuation this is a very long sentence they've got some very nice ideas here but it might be more effective if it was broken up um, mm -hmm. more naturally. At the other end of the scale, Victoria? Yeah, we, we may see that uh, there are paragraphs that are made up of very short sentences, like this one. So again, this is a problem because um, the, the paragraph doesn't have like a, an a structure, as a, doesn't um, look as a whole, so to speak, doesn't uh, fit in together. Moving up to, uh, to C1. I think mm -hmm. candidates making more use of cohesive devices within paragraphs, and as I said before, perhaps across paragraphs. Mm -hmm. So, um, good use of organization features. So, with uh, cohesive devices beyond linking words, we're talking about an effective use of pronouns, um, referring forwards, referring backwards. Mm -hmm. um, like we see, this is becoming a problem, and then blah, 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 but it can have worse consequences. So, <clears throat> keeping a thread moving across longer sentences or, as we said, within paragraphs. Um, referring back to points previously made, sorry, I just said this, but as said before, or, you know, aforementioned, I use aforementioned a little bit too much. <laughs> um, not everything about social media is a disadvantage or an advantage. Um, up into C2, Victoria? Yeah, we're going to find a greater use of internal cohesive devices also external and the discussion is developed uh, by building on previous comments and providing relevant examples excellent um further examples of cohesion extended sections of text covering all aspects of the topic um no single sentence paragraphs really um at c2 and the clear links between the sentences providing coherence to the whole text um, as you can see here, these two sentences are very clearly interlinked and developed. Um, here's another example. I think this is taken from the handbook, isn't it, Victoria? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm sorry. Somebody asked about using. Uh, we didn't have the time, uh, really, to actually show you samples of writing, uh, and it's a lot to read in a webinar. Mm -hmm. uh, but go to the teacher's handbook. This is taken from, I think, page 33. Um, so yeah, organized impressively, um, using a wide range of devices and patterns with complete flexibility. And then examples, some people, however, similarly, the key in general. And again, the paragraph divisions supporting the internal organization of the argument 
um, integrates the evaluation of the key points in the input and the writer's own views subtly and fluently. Mm -hmm. Okay, and as we said before, that opening question clearly addressed throughout and then returned to in the conclusion. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is taken from page 33, okay, of the C2 Teacher's Handbook. Mm -hmm. Um, so here is all of the criteria in its glory once again. <laughs> Please use the criteria. And um, as we, were, we just showed you with the examiner's comments, the way that they mark, and this is very useful for you as teachers, is quote the criteria, give an example. Quote the criteria, give an example. And if the students become more familiar with it, it will help them in the long term. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, sorry if that was a little bit dense, but it is C1 and C2. <laughs> um, and I hope we've made things a bit clearer in terms of uh, community of achievement in organization. I think you as language teachers are, are aware of, you know, the levels of language being used and content, as we said, you use the rubric, is it reflected in, in the task? But I think at these levels, yeah, community of achievement and, and the organization can become uh, become more developed and more complex. Um, so to finish off, we're going to talk you through Write and Improve. Mm -hmm. um, apologies if you've seen this before, but it is one of the most amazing resources we have, I think. So you go along to Write and Improve. David can give you the link, but it will be in the handout, which I'll give you access to now, actually. Um, and how does it work, Victoria? Yeah, um, we, we recommend that you register, uh, you and your students register. Uh, for your student, well, for you first, uh, what you are going to, to find is that you, there are uh, workbooks for your students to practice and you can create your own workbook with your own tasks and then you can invite your students using a code so they can do the task that you have created. And I think it is still true, George, that the class view option is, is still free. Um, with the class view, you will be able to, to have access to all your students' um, pieces of writing and also the feedback that they have obtained through writing and proof. For students, students um, will think they can register, it is free. And they will have a number of workbooks for um, for each diff um, one for each level, beginner, intermediate, and advanced, with different tasks in each of their workbooks. And the, the great thing about Write and Improve is that they are going to be able to practice and get instant feedback. We are going to see more of this now. Yeah, we're going to talk you through from very low writing up to very high writing, <laughs> um, specifically for C1, C2 students. I think this helps you as teachers because I I don't know how far or how developed um, Write and Improve really works in terms of communicative achievement and organization at higher levels. Yes, it can recognize paragraphing, but when we're talking about that internal cohesion and organization, I don't know how good it is at that. In terms of grammar and vocab and accuracy, it is incredibly reliable. So you can encourage your students to use this and it takes at least that weight off your shoulders as teachers. It works quite well on content as well, as mm -hmm. we'll see, but for the higher level language, you can trust this, okay? So I'll show you quickly how it works. We chose an A2 task here. Write a paragraph describing your home, um, include information about blah, blah, blah. Okay, so the students write their answer in the box there where it says write your text. They can either copy and paste it in or do it directly on the on the platform. They can do it on a mobile phone, a tablet or a computer. Um, so I put on my A1 hat and I wrote this. Mm -hmm. Might be familiar to some of you who have, uh, have, have lower level students, okay. Quite, um, quite a few, quite a few issues here. <laughs> uh, grammatical, spelling, etc. So plops that in, you click check, and in session, in, blah, in seconds, mm -hmm. you get instant feedback, okay? Mm -hmm. So here you can see um, that band, did you write about the question? That's focusing on content. So I did, I, I, I did everything that was asked of me in terms of content, got five marks on content. Below that, more importantly, is the granular feedback that you mm -hmm. get. So you can see here, I got an A1, it gives you a CFR level, but the most useful thing is, <laughs> 
this. So how is the feedback divided up, Victoria? Yeah, uh, Write and Improve uh, provides uh, feedback at a uh, word, phrase, and sentence level. Uh, we can see that uh, the exclamation mark is uh, mainly pointing at um, problems with spelling. And in this case, the, spell, the, um, the feedback is quite straightforward. So we're just suggesting, did you mean to write friend? And then uh, at phrase and sentence level, we are not giving them the correct answer. We are just pointing that there is something that is not working, but we want them to reflect and try to come up with the with the correct uh, option. Exactly. Here. So, so it's, di it's direct. Oh, sorry, Victoria. Sorry. sorry. Yeah, direct, yeah, direct, direct them to where, towards where the problems are and putting, putting, putting the responsibility in their hands to make the difference. And mm -hmm. at higher level students, this should be even easier. Yeah. Um, so we rewrote that. You can take, take that feedback on board, rewrite your answer. So here you go. We've improved this a bit. We've sorted out some spelling, a bit of grammar. Um, I think it's a pretty solid A2 now. Pop that in again click check and yes there you go I got an A2 um, you have the feedback screen which we've seen before and you also have this the changes screen so there's a there's a, um, a visual representation of the changes the students have made to their text so they can see where they've made the changes and how that has affected the overall feedback okay uh, and this continues so they can see every version of every piece of writing that they've done and see how they improve. Here we clicked it again. Here the feedback has changed. There are still some issues. Um, so we rewrote it. I think this takes it up to a B1. This is much mm -hmm. nicer. One thing you have to remember, this, as far as I can tell, um, is, is error free there might be one little error in it mm -hmm. um this gets a b1 okay you have to remember it is artificial intelligence okay it can only mark what is given to it okay so if you um it c can't really say you'll see one in just 50 words um, and you've got to bear in mind the size of the tasks that we would ask a C1 student to do, 220, 260 words, I think. And um, so at higher levels, it does need a lot of language to confidently say you are of a higher level. And um, you also get this progress screen you can see in the bottom right hand corner. Mm, that's um, right. So to register so that you can have access. Exactly. To so if you register, it continue, you know, it keeps a record of everything that you've done. Um, and just to show that it does work at higher levels, here again is the, the changes screen. Um, we put that through again. See, it wasn't sure about it. It wasn't very happy with cooker. Um, it wasn't too happy about my turn of phrase, but it doesn't think it's wrong. Um, and just to show that it works at higher levels, and even the content does, I wrote this. Okay, so I am describing my house in the middle of it. I talk about my kitchen and my garden. Don't talk about my living room, okay? So we put this through. I'm sorry, we're rushing a bit because we want to finish more or less on time. You put this through and I get C2, okay? Probably C2 plus, I think. Uh, <laughs> um, so just to prove that it does work at the higher levels, but it did notice that I didn't talk about the living room. So I only get four out of five on that. So some of the content points, it is quite good at covering, okay? Uh, but as you can see, it's still it's unsure about my much more complex multi-clause sentences. It's not entirely sure, but it can mark all the way up to the high levels. And in terms of vocab and grammar range and complexity, it is it is highly reliable. Okay. So I took that and added in the bit about the living room, which is now in the middle, just to show you that it works on the content as well. Um, and I got a five. Okay, so just to show you that it is, it is, it is aware of of your content alongside your language. Okay, so please encourage your students to use this, even at the high levels. As I said, I think it's much more useful at high levels for language, grammar, vocab, complexity, range, um, rather than the more complex criteria. Um, and that's all we have time for. So we've run a little bit over. But um, just to talk you through some of the other resources that are available, Victoria, I've yeah. given you all access, sorry, I've given you all access to the certificate now in the bottom right-hand corner. 
Um, but what else do we have, Victoria, to help our teachers? Yeah, on our main website, there is a section supporting every teacher, and there you will um, you can access exam preparation material. Also, you can read our, uh, the blog supporting every teacher. You can also check our uh, webinars, but um, you can also have access to free teaching resources. Um, in the last I think for the last month or so, our colleagues have been creating a lot of uh, new lesson plans that can be adapted to the teaching online situation. They can still be used face-to-face, uh, -face, of course, um, but um, they are there for you to, to use. And most of them, if not all, are C1, okay? So this is the highest level uh, goes, but uh, there are also uh, lesson plans for the rest of the level. So just like the, the highest level is, is C1. And also uh, worth noting that you can check our support pack where you're going to find, uh, again, a lot of resources, everything is there, so quite easy um, to access all the material. Lovely, and I think that is it, isn't it, Victoria? It is. Thank you. <laughs> here, here are some more useful links. Thank you all um, to come for, for coming. Um, I hope it has been useful. It's quite a lot to get through in an hour, um, uh, especially at C1 and C2, but we've done our best. Uh, we have listening and speaking on the 17th and 19th of June. Um, mm -hmm. They're now live on the website if you want to sign up for those. Um, so just yeah, for a couple more minutes, any more questions? That anybody has? Have you? Uh, so Sorry, Fran George. Yes, I have. I have. Okay. Francesca, at the moment, there's a two month free trial of the additional feature, which is called Class View. And yes, with Class View, you get complete visibility of everything and every version of the writing that your students have done. Okay. Um, so check that out on the free trial. We don't know what will happen after this situation in terms of that, but um, check it out and see. I mean, we've had incredible feedback on that. It gives you very detailed information on on all of your all of your students' work. Um, so, so have a play with that. Well, thank you all. It's very nice to have the opportunity to speak to so many teachers so frequently. Um, mm -hmm. Next week, we will be doing reading and listening, assessing reading and listening online. Okay, and that will be looking at all levels um, and more of a focus on the sort of resources that are available um, and, 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 and what needs to be borne in mind when, when, when making any assessment, I think, really. But I will be focusing on, on reading, reading and listening, probably a bit of use of English as well. Mm. Um, um, to register uh, for our webinars um, on our main website, I think we've, uh, yeah, in the Supporting Every Teacher um, website, there is access, and um, you can access our list of uh, webinars and you can register them. Excellent, yep. Cambridge, just Google Cambridge English webinars and it will take you to the, to the, um, to the page. All right, well, thank you all very much. Thank you. Lovely to see you. And uh, and we will hopefully see you next week. Have a great another, week. Another, another point in the future. Have a lovely weekend. And we will speak to you soon. Okay? Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.